was he a single guy was he no he was married he was married and he, he was married. He told you that he was married well i knew that he was married okay I think he didn't have to tell me. Yeah. You know, I, I think I knew. Yeah. Because these people, their lives are out there. Yeah. And get, yeah. I didn't care. And I'm not going to lie and try and make myself look good. You know, I, I didn't care. I've dated married guys. In the midst of our communicating, the wife called me. I said, dude, it's almost my tongue on us. I'm like, ah. We're not almost sad. You mind I'm your like, own. I'm like, hey, dude, you know, I want what you have. You know what I'm saying? You know, mm. we look at people's lives and we want the lives that they live, and that's not knowing. the biggest mistake. Not knowing what they're going through. That's the the biggest mistake. And what fire they are sitting on mm. top of. Because now we see the finished product mm. and we want a bit of that. You know? So it's like, ah, when I put my game, you understand? And I remember one day he's like, um, let's go to the stadium. How Before. old was he when you met him? He was 10 years older than me. Okay. You were 17 years old. 17. Mm -hmm. He was 10 years older. And we started having a lot of sexual intercourse. And I remember at some point, I was feeding his drug habit. Um, um, Chill the school fees. I would steal my school fees money because mom would give me cash to go pay. And sometimes he'd be like, yo, I'm outside um, with a Mexi taxi. I can I can't chill it. I'd come down. and pay. Um, and he would be high. I don't know how to tell you, but go push up a little TV, girl, son. That's what he said. That's what he said. Um, and I watch TV, you know. And there he is in a wheelchair, looking very bad. He didn't even look like he looked when I met him. Yeah. He had deteriorated It was worse. Badly. Yeah. Because I didn't get I didn't get a bad man. I didn't get a bad guy, whichever way it was. So after you know, you met other people. You I met other people. With other people. I continued. So you infected other um, people. I had. I can't deny. No, say yes. No one has came to me mm. and said before I met you, I was negative. Now I'm positive. Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Within. I don't need an introduction at this point. Joining me today, I'm Hazel by the way, joining me today is a beautiful, a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous woman. Not you making me blush. Wazawa <laughs> Mushe. Thank you. Sisi. Lebohang Brenda. Mutsumi! Mushaileni Zanza, Mushaileni Zanza! Oh, thank you, crew. Thank you so much. My brr. Or when I lebs on one. Whichever one. Which one I answer is it? To both. You answer to both. I answer to both. How are you, Lebo? I'm blessed in yourself. Keshab. I'm great. You have been so busy. Like December since it's home. <laughs> You have been uh, so busy. Spacing. I hope it's a good busy. It's though. a good busy. Right. It's right. A, it's a, it's a good busy. Um, but for those who don't know you, who've mm -hmm. never seen you, who have never come <sighs> across your story, who is Lebo and Utumengan? <laughs> oh, firstly, thank you very much for having You're me. You're welcome. And hi to all your kitty followers, ne? Kitty, kitty, viewers. Kitty oh, netizens. Yes. Okay. Um, thank you very much for having me. It's really an honor. Um, so I am an HIV activist, um, a life coach, inspirational speaker, and an author. I've been openly living with HIV now for 14 years. It's going to be 15 in 2024. Wow. And basically, I do a lot of activism and advocacy work. And I think really, I'm just um, using my story to inspire, give hope, and educate more than anything. That's how I could round it up. Mm. But Tobari, you've been living with HIV for 14 years now. There is this scaring joke. But HIV and no, it's only HIV. I, I don't get that. <laughs> <laughs> I never 
never get that. You know what? I understand what they're saying, right? Yeah. But I think it's simply because back then, remember, people had to fight medication. So a lot of people then fall, um, fell very ill and were bedridden, nearly because there was no medication. But now, if you test right now, you can literally start medication tonight. We understand that. We don't have to wait for the CD4 count. There's no longer that thing, now you must fall ill before you start treatment. So that's why people feel there's a change and maybe there's a new variant. Oh no, it's not that. It's just because there's treatment yeah. and there's very good treatment, you know, because they're always trying to improve it. Back then, people would drink pills twice a day, boma five, three, six, six, but now it's one pill. But the are not for everyone, yeah. right? There are people who still take two to three pills because they're different um, types of ARVs. It's not only just the one pill, but most people, and if you are like newly infected, that's what you'll be introduced to. Mm. Yeah. Wow, Lebo. Um, let's take it a bit back. Alrighty. Right. You're a beautiful woman. Um, you're a young woman. I just want to know. Um, where did you grow up? Mm -hmm. It's the accent for me, ma'am. <laughs> where did you go to school? I come from London. <laughs> <laughs> what was your childhood like? And also, how old are you? So I'm 34. Okay. Um, I was born 2nd of March, 1989. Um, so I almost up, half of your life, you you've been living with HIV. Yeah, almost half, almost of, your half life. of it. Yeah. Um, oh, Papa, but we'll get into it later. We'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah. Um, I grew up in a place called London. It's next to Cresta. And well, originally I'm from Pretoria, go Okay. Even though I was born in Joburg, but yeah. home is Mabobani. Okay. My grandparents from my paternal side, Bago my Didi got Wow. So I'm a Pretorian well, girl. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm a... Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but um, I spent most of my childhood in London. My mom was a domestic worker. Um, so. Oh, let's go to Kitchening. Go to Kitchening, yeah. Okay. Hence the accent. I went to a multiracial school, which Got I was very it. fortunate yeah. to go to the school, yeah. you know, because my parents obviously couldn't afford it. So I grew up in London. It was a very nice place, right? And like I said, I'm privileged and I'm honored. And only um, years later, I really appreciate the fact that I had the opportunity. Not many had that opportunity. But I think what... What played a role or what um, disturbed my life is that growing up in that setup, right? Okay. Yes, there's the big house, but I live in the, the maid's quarters, yeah. you know? And obviously the kids I go to school with live in the big houses, but not all of them. But also as kids, we would lie. I think later on in life, I found out that some of my friends, live their mothers night, were also domestic up, workers. Yeah. We understand that. But you know, sometimes... Um, the employers would allow us to be in the house. So you could always say, to understand. So there was this thing, yeah, below self-esteem. I was like, I don't fit in. You understand? Because of my background, you know, my mom gave me everything I needed. She gave me love. She gave me shelter. She gave me the basic needs that I need as a human, right? But there's always that societal needs. Or once, I would call, when you start growing up, Right, and then there was that thing of I didn't fit in, and happy. Mm. I'm a big girl, you can see. Mm. And when you're a big girl in school, you'd get teased, you know. I'm not the best at netball, as I am, but I'm, I'm just not there. Were better it. athletes, yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's it's funny that you say that because, like, Uchi Bijo, like, you're so pretty, <laughs> it took me a very long time to get to realize it. <laughs> it, wow. it really took me a long time. I Growing up, I never saw myself as, as beautiful. And because of maybe the bullying and, and being teased, and because when I started primary school, I did a bit of school in Mabobani. I went to Radineo Lebana. I just don't remember which areas they were, but it was in Pretoria. Mm -hmm. And I gave, when I started my first year in the multiracial school, I had to repeat a grade because I could not speak a word of English. 100%. So when I was body bullying, you know, being called names and whatnot, um, I never really saw myself as beautiful. And plus, because of my size as well, I was always the tall big girl. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me, what role did um, your mom play in, in, in terms of affirming you? to sort of be a certain way in this world that we're living in? Or was she just the woman who 
worked hard to provide for you and make sure that you have an education? It was a bit of both. Okay. You know, my mom is a very affectionate person. My mom has told me she loves me since I was a kid to date. You know, she's told me how important I am. And um, she did work very hard because she, she raised us. My father was there, but she, he, was, he was more furniture. Sorry, daddy, I love you now. I know you're here <laughs> in my life now. But he was more of furniture, Gilabana. He was not emotionally present, nor was he financially present. Unfortunately, he had um, an alcohol problem. Le problem, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, mm. so and as much as I was the girl, the little girl who would follow him everywhere, because I told you that affection, but my mom, oh, my mom is a prayer warrior. My mom is strict. My mom made me feel important. I think the problem was just, I didn't know how to carry that out when I left the house, but she never robbed me of telling me that she loved me, how important, how important I am and how privileged I am to be where I'm at. Yeah. So your cup was just lacking, Jay. There were things that you needed to work on with My cup self. was lapping outside yeah. with self, right? Yeah. Because now there's a thing of comparing each other, Hazel. 100%. And I think even as adults, we tend... It, then the more social media area, it's worse. It's worse you know, yeah. Kibona Hazel post on Tonto, Dubai, driving, whatever. And if you have void, self, low self-love, low self-esteem, if you don't know yourself, know your purpose or know what you're born for, it's easy for you to fall for things you see on social media. It's easy for you to start doing certain things. Maybe we'll talk about it later, you know, the lifestyle, Yama 2000, whatever. It's because of something they're trying to fill in side there's a root to everything yes we can say in there but a lot of people are going through emotional emptiness and they fill it by materialistic things or sexual relationships or whatever lifestyles they lead 100 percent. and then what happened to you after school um did you further your studies? Did you start working? What, what, what Unfortunately happened? not. Mm -hmm. um, I, I haven't been to varsity. Okay. Um, I did. You finished <laughs> matric though? I did a technical matric. Okay. What, what, <laughs> I always love that. What happened? It's entry. Oh, girl. I mean, I did the most. What happened? Um, oh, maybe let's start when I was 13. Okay. So we can. But now I won't tell everything because now people must buy my book. And get, so, okay. Like, uh, the one mo is the thing. Mo. Mo. I forgot it. I'll send it to you, my baby. Please. Um, so I think the problem started at 13. Okay. All right. Um, I broke my virginity at 13. At 13. And it was simply, again, the thing of fitting in. There was a friend. Um, oh, no, this weekend, she did this with whoever. And now everyone was cheering her on. And so in my mind, I'm like, Yo, this is what I need to do. Mm -hmm. And I had happened to be with a guy at the time who was in matric. So, so he was um, what, 17, 18? He was 17. Okay. Yeah. And I was like, dude, I'm ready. You know, he had... So no jaw, like at 13. Dude, naked jaw. Okay. And, and I think it started innocently with crushes, yeah. sending booty, love letters. I don't think it was... Love. It wasn't serious. It was just mojolo <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um so I was with that guy and um I wanna, you know, have sex. Um I didn't know what it meant and what it looked like, obviously, you know. And phew, I don't want to think about my first time, it was horrible. There were no roses, no flowers, no nothing. I'm never gonna say where it happened. Sure. It was horrible. Um Was he also a virgin? I don't know. Mm. I have no idea. I don't know if he was a virgin. But he was he was that hot guy that everybody wanted when in I stayed. School. At the time I was now staying in Windsor. Okay. So this place called Windsor East. Okay. It's next to Cresta still. I had moved. Um so with was that, your mom still. With my mom. Okay. Yeah. So there was that he was that guy, man, everyone. He was just popular, so I could say but he probably wasn't. Did he come after you? Yeah, now she thing. Yes, he did. Okay. He did. He came af after me. And because, again, I always, I always, now my, you must say my dad was there, but not emotionally present. Mm -hmm. So when a guy or a boy, let me say a boy, told me, oh, I'm beautiful, it felt so good, yeah. you know. 
And um, that's why I started dating. It had nothing to do with love, really. I didn't know what love was at that age. But just to be told, you're beautiful. It validated I love you. It validated. You. That's the word yeah. I was looking for. It validated me, you know. And we did what we did, even though it wasn't all the way in, but it happened. Mm. And um, then I go back to school, child. Did you tell your mom that, your mama, this happened? Or My that mom was, was going to kill secret? me. <gasps> did you tell your friends? Did. Okay. Barring, barring yeah, from I yes. Became, no. I know I became the joke. How could you? So we found out a girl was she actually was not lying. doing it. She had not done she it. She was not you doing know? it. So mm-hmm. now I didn't have a big bowl. Do you know one? So that was that. And then, um, so my mom is from Nelspreit. Okay. In Pumalanga. And um, Gary Holidays would go there. Yeah. Rilo Chaka. Now I'm what? I'm 14. Mm. I'm in high school in grade 8. And sure, I noticed her no man every time get a mom calling a kebab popular because it was hoa, get a job And um, my grandfather was a pastor, my ooh, complicated family, my cousin was a gangster. So, you know, I, I came from I would say popular household, and I loved it. It filled what I, th- I, I thought it was filling the void. So, I did my grade eight. And when I was at um, Nelspreet for grade 8 holidays, I tricked my mom. So I'd go back maybe three days before school's open in January. And I was like, nah, I get good. You know, uh, when I'm going to transfer, go to that school. There's good schools here. You know, I'll go to a private I wanna school. I want to stay here. Whatever. I want to stay here. Um, I, I try to give her reasons, you know. Plus, at the time, my parents were going through a separation, which eventually was a divorce. Mm. You know? Substance and Lena, she was. Or I guess she you know, brought I, my story. I need a change of scenery. I exactly. So you were playing her basically, I did. and oh, you know you were playing sure. her. And I've played my mom, Samuel. <laughs> Mommy, I'm sorry. I've played this woman. Okay. Um, and then I moved to Nelspruit. Mm. So now I'm in grade nine. I go to a school. It was a private school. What happened First with you and school. your boyfriend? You you broke the virginity no, broke and then the virginity what? And I think we broke up. I can't okay. even remember. The relationship just years later, fizzled I found out from there. Prison, but yeah, yeah, we broke up. Yeah, yeah. Um, like it wasn't a relationship, man. You know. And I think also that act, ili to sit and then exactly. you were just like, yeah, we, we, we broke yeah. up. And so when I was played, I got that popularity, and then I was dating this oh this guy. And he was also, I think, the dad, but behind a counselor or something. So I kind of now had a whole package, you know. Does it happen coincidentally that you date it, guys? Or Bonababa, they, you sort of attract the same guy? Or Girl, when I now I last that, oh, I attract these niggas. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, there's instances where I attract them, and then there's instances where I would, I would never tell a guy I like you, but I would. No, let me talk in the past tense. Yeah. I would never tell a guy that I liked them. But obviously, I would do certain things to make you ask me out. To understand about you flirting and open myself up to a point where you would now want to be with me. But but with um, these it guys, most of them would, would come for me and and ask me out. Because again, yeah. uchibi, that's the thing. Thank you. Uchibi, uchibi. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, babe. <laughs> so in Nelspread, I got what I wanted, mm. you know, but... That's when you became a rebel. Like, it told. Like, I was naughty. I was um, not sleeping home, you know. And thing is, people always ask. My grandfather, unfortunately, passed away the same year I moved home. And I've got an, I was living with my eldest sister now, right? My sister was never controlling. But she would tell me, if this is what you're doing, get on it's contraceptives. So um like she would always give me life lessons but remember it's 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 what i would do with them you know because people will always ask where was who where was who were, i mean where was these people and whatever the case is my family always warned me my family is very strict but i did what i wanted to do and um i think back then in our times we did things under carpet there was no social media to expose me at a party someone taking a video or whatever yeah. so i was able to live double lives i was able to be a good girl at home and um, be reckless when I'm out there and nobody would really come and, and tell my story. And, you know, sometimes 
they would deny label i not label rizi label also yeah. yeah so yeah now spray too now spray was hectic but mm. i think for me um highlight of now spray which is not a nice one we had run away from my friend not not run away nere dojitse ka le bati busigo well ka window busigo went to a 21st birthday party and it was not very far it was literally like the next street so we could walk and then gama tha we now walking back to our house and there are these group of guys who came towards us and i recognized these guys from during the day they would always every time i go visit my friend nevan shela you know try corner me and stuff and i'd always tell them where to get off and i remember one of them saying in swat du buti um sigbambile namhla stokshanga elbans meaning they were going to gang rape me you know and i was like who and i started fighting you know there was mm. alcohol involved and um during the days when i was when i was when i used to drink i would have ngani when i was drunk mm. you know so i tried to fight these to fight these guys off um and then they stabbed me i've got a scar here on my finger with an amstel bottle kitlo amstel ka pelo le moya and stabbed me somewhere on my head i've got a scar as well but they didn't um Rape they were not you. able to take me yeah. because there was a cop who came i think not some something or something and then yeah. i had a, a warning shot and then the crowd dispersed yeah. cuz these guys never tell you were in the community so people they were cool are like from far Balico, because yeah. the noise people woke up from their houses but they couldn't really try and help because never tell by these guys they were sort of gangsters or these old zinyana so za kokasi you know and that guy then took me to the clinic but unfortunately the same guy then took advantage of me later that night so he didn't the take me cop. to my friend's house right the cop yeah the cop so he was like no it's late i'm not going to go knock on people's houses because after the clinic they didn't admit me they just Both um stitched, stitched me yeah. bamfa body medication and told me when to come back for a check up and so forth and um he's like look i can't go knocking at people's houses this late so I spend the night at my house and then Hosen get off the head and I'll explain the story where was your friend Lebo my friend went back home so she managed to escape she managed those to gangsters. escape and she went back home yeah right um because it was just the three of us we were with a guy friend but the guy friend and and I see strong for a so but how did they back on the real way yes okay. when that guy but how did they want to get yeah understand okay and um i give up blame me you know say what i'm saying and so do took advantage and i so think so you went to his house got his i went to his house yeah. it's the chairs and i remember i was wearing white sneakers um a blue jean and a white t-shirt and um when you get injured motlhong you bleed a lot especially yes. when you are highly intoxicated yes. So my clothes were literally covered in blood. blood yeah. So it was only wa gore no e re ko fe skipa in a short and um ke ke you know you'll sleep with this and fuck over and stuff like that. And I'm still traumatized and I think bujwa se botsa mele right now. I'm still trying to figure out what was happening. But now he's a cop. You know, I I, I I've got safe. a level of trust mm-hmm. and I feel safe mm-hmm. even though he's a cop and he's a stranger. Mm-hmm. But kill upon us, I understand. And he took advantage and I think I felt I owed him because he saved you. He saved me. Mm. You understand that. And the next day he didn't even take me to my friend's house. So he had sex with you then. Yeah, he did. Yeah. And I think only years later when I started activism and advocacy and I understood consent and I understood really what rape is, and I was like, "Who? This is actually what happened to me, you know, on that night." And um that was that and did I think he used a condom that night. Do you remember? Yeah, I can't even remember. Mm. I was 15. Mm. I was 14. Wow. No, I was 15. I was 15. Wow. Because 14, I was in high school here in Joburg. I was 15. Mm. Right. And um, my mom. Obviously, they found out about the incident, and it was around September when the incident happened. And my mom was like, "Nah, you're coming back." to Johannesburg, you know. Already she had said you're coming back because of the things I was doing. I was attending body street bashes, body what what, body what what. And um even though I was, I've always performed well in school besides whatever lifestyle I lived, but she felt I need to come back and be with her. And um that was that and I came back to Joburg. 
So that was the first time a man sexually raped abused you. Me. Yeah. Yeah. And then you came to do grade 10, 11 and your N3. So I came to do my grade 10. Yeah. So I've dropped out of high school three times. Okay. Right. Um, so I did my grade 10. Now it's in Bromfin team. Um, my mom now, the employer, um, gets a flat. Okay. So now we stay in Bromfontein because the tenants to move out so we can move in. But I'm staying with my nephew. Ma always stayed Gomsebiting. It's only now when she changed jobs that she started staying with us. She was staying Gomsebiting. So we were staying in Brom. And I now started going to a high school in Brom as well. Mm, different yeah. environment, different she, Different vibes. environment. Yeah. Now, okay. now that's different levels. Okay. The void is still not filled. I'm still chasing the void, you know? And I always like emphasizing that in my story. Because until you do work on you and do work on self, the void will never be filled. 100%. Irregardless, you can move to London, move to New York. You will still be the empty You will still girl. be empty until you work on yourself, you know? So the void was still there. Now... Soweto crew, we all know people from Soweto are cool. Bao ba fast, you know. And Bao never like a ekatri di. Understand? <laughs> so now, Aish, yes, I'm the new kid at school, but I'm still not getting that thing that I wanted. Understand that? So now, um, well, I would I had started drinking already, but now we we banking, we're going to go my hell, bro, having your like, flat ooh, parties or whatever, yeah. smoking your weed, yeah. so, and, and whatever the case is. And now we start getting introduced to, y'all call them Jalafians, whatever they call them mm -hmm. lately, um, to that crew, you know, to the West African guys. Um, we start getting introduced to now dating and been giving money, you know, something that... By, by Nigerian guys. Understand. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. And... The fast life continued. It never changed. Now I'm starting to go to clubs um, because I, I've got a big body. Nobody could tell at well, the time. There, no. for the gay, yeah. for the one, we understand. And I don't think I don't think clubs are that strict. I think it's a little where they would want to maybe ask for an ID if they suspect that you're young, mm. right? So now I'm introduced to a lifestyle of body clubs and body nightlife, body getting picked up. Um, by cars, Koskolong, um, smoking cigarettes as well, selling cigarettes. Mm. As much as I was never really a smoker, I would just really put it in my lips, just Wanna be to cool. be seen as popular or yeah. cool, or whatever the case yeah. is. Yeah. So, like, with this void, yeah, how is it? Is it daddy issues? Is it. It was daddy issues okay. and not loving and respecting myself. Yeah. <laughs> You know, okay. because um, there's nothing a yes, my mom was a domestic worker, but there's nothing in a kishataka in a conclusion. I've never gone to bed hungry. Um, yes, I've had to wear the same school shoes maybe for two years, um, but I always had what I needed, mm. you know. So it was daddy issues, it was the low self esteem, the low self love, and low self respect for myself and my body. And mm. was there ever a time where there was a like that voice, Irmara. It's always this there. Is, this is why, why Latham. Your conscience is always there. You, you just know? chose to ignore it. You choose to ignore it. Yeah. Your conscience will always tell you. You know, sometimes when you do something, Hayes, mm. and, and it's not you, you know? It's like maybe going to a nightclub and it's, it's not you. You're not a nightclub person, mm. you know? You'd always feel some kind of uncomfortability mm -hmm. but we're good at acting we're good at pretending mm -hmm. and when you go home and you're by yourself that's when you start having conversations but there'll always be that you know the angel devil kind 100%. of thing there'll always be that voice telling you, you know this choose. is what you must do yeah One you just the make a decision and, and you continue because yeah. this is this is what this is the life you're choosing it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a matter of choice it's not like i didn't know bad or wrong i knew what I was doing was wrong. I knew intergenerational relationships were wrong. I knew being sexually active at my age was wrong because also it's not about age, it's about the biological part. Mm -hmm. You were a kid at 15, 13, you know, having sexual intercourse. Mm -hmm. But logically, you are not developed mm -hmm. to be having such. Your daughter is 13 now. Sure. What, what conversations are you having with her now regarding those topics is it I think more than anything I instill love for my daughter to love herself 
you know, to love herself, respect herself. And I always try to work on her self-esteem. My daughter is very shy, right? But I always try and, and I can't change her being shy, but I, I make her understand who she is and whose she is and that she's born for a purpose, you know. Um, she's going to high school next year. Already in primary school, there's always, you know, my friends have this, I don't understand that. And I, I need to un make her understand, you know. Um, in 2020, I lost my job, lost everything I had, was living in Midrand, was on a verge of buying a, car, a house. She could literally have anything and anything she wanted at any time. You know, she was very spoiled and I would travel overseas, bring her stuff and whatever. And, and now there was a lifestyle change, a drastic one. Her dad also passed away, you understand? As much as now... I should take her next, but it's not like before. It's not like she would be like, she would be having phones every year or I'd be traveling, bringing her things or we'd be going. I try, you know, but I make her understand that this is where I'm at right now, but it doesn't in any way change you. You know, it doesn't in any way have an impact on who you are and and future how when, you understand that. I try by all means, um, for her not to lead the life that I led. And, and I think that's part of me sharing my story. It's not really for myself. You know, I know people will drag, call me names and whatever the case is, but I have a lot of young people in my inbox, a lot of young girls, and I'm talking 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Older women, I won't really talk about much, but there are a lot of young girls who are leading the life that I led and who are empty and don't want to do the things that they're doing, but they feel this is what they need to do. I'm live coaching a lot of girls. There was one who was in varsity and she was like, Sis Lebo, I've even lost count of the number of men in Lalanab because Nafsa is don't do whatever the case is, right? And I coached her. One thing I'll never do is I'll never force you to stop your lifestyle, because I won't be able to support you, but I will instill certain lessons in your life and you will make a choice at the end of the day, or do I continue? If I continue, I'm going to protect myself. I'm going to make more informed choices. I'll get on prep. I'll buy condoms, put them in my bag and protect myself. You know, I'll continue planning my future. I'll continue going to school and stuff like that. But this girl sent me a text and she was like, because I was like, take your CV, go to your nearest mall, you know, and just try. weekend to just negotiate. And she found herself a job and she was like, I'm starting to also changing a lifestyle, it takes time. You know, she was like, hanyani, hanyani, I'm starting to let go of Batumana because now I'm able to get get to the eo and buy myself whatever it is. Of course, the money won't afford body frontal, the body iPhone, body what what but the basic needs she's able to get for herself. She no longer has to really open her legs for someone to buy her cosmetics. Yeah. So I think it's tricky, hey, because Wana, you can pour into Wana, but at the end of the day, Wana is still going to do Senas Batlang. Because yeah. your situation, it's your mom did what you are doing for your daughter, mm -hmm. but you still chose your own path. Yeah. You know? And Naga so salamurao ko dilo Naga so, unfortunately, yeah. it's, it's up to, I can advise you all I want, you know? And with the girls that I coach, I'm very one honest, open person. Yeah. You know, I can advise you for six months. At the end of the day, the choice is yours, mm. you know? Mm. Um, but one thing I like is back then, Condom usage, the body what what it was hush hush conversations, right? I inform my girls. Especially with older guys, you don't really have a chance to negotiate. You don't. But now I use myself as an example. Mm. You know, breaking my virginity at thirteen led me to now, if you connect the dots, having kidney failure and having to be on dialysis three times a week because of one stupid choice that I made to understand that and also sleeping with whoever I slept with who infected me without a condom, something that I could have prevented, right? So this is me saying, look, I'm not saying stop, but protect yourself. Yeah. And these girls um, tend to get comfortable. Mm -hmm. You know, I've seen a couple even drop out of school, because of this. Unfortunately, there'll be another you. And one thing I know, 
um, about men that I've dated that have money, they'll always replace you when they feel like it. I don't know now, right? I don't want to speak about now, but Mina, back then, they'll replace you. And there's a guy I dated um, back then who, we used to call them, what, sugar daddies? And they say blessers these days. But I remember him telling me something about me. I, I would never settle down with someone like you. He was having a conversation with me after we had a night together. He's like, I'll never settle down with someone like you. You don't have a future. Your beauty is not going to take you places. Because in my head, now when I started recognizing in my 20s, and everybody wants to be with me, um, I started thinking my beauty can take me places. You know, my beauty can, can get me a car. My beauty can get me a house. My beauty can sustain my future. I understand that. And this guy said this to me. And I remember he gave me 10K and he's like, tell him because I have conversations with you and you're very smart. You know, you feel like there is a future somewhere out there, but whatever the case is. And, and I've, I'll never forget those words from that guy. And, and, and that's what I always say to these young girls. These guys don't care about you. And once they feel whatever flavor, if they deal, there'll always be another you. That's why what that, what that, what that. I'm not saying you can never settle down with someone rich. You can, but you need to get your own as a young woman, you know, you need to go to school, get your qualifications, because nobody can get those things from you. Mouse Benzili, you got your own house, your car, you got your own investment. Nobody can come and claim you. And that is just an addition to That's an addition. That. Nobody yeah. can come and claim you and say, Unjengi Wenzili, mm. or I bought this, mm. you know, take whatever and whatever. But also that thing is tricky because that is how relationships, they are so so strained they're very strained they're strained because if if i'm gonna hold down my own and you're gonna find me having held down my own mm. whatever little i have acquired or much it's a certain attitude that we have as women yahoo automatically you cannot i guess because you you were not really there well i think i think struggle. that will, will go back to to the morals and values you have as a woman understand if we now are talking relationships at the end of the day this is your partner are you going to respect your partner or not yeah. love comes with respect now if you're going to be having an attitude of isn't those i'm lazy i i don't think you really love that person mm -hmm. you love motohao irregardless or totally only a millionaire or a billionaire it boils down to respect for the person that you love you understand mm -hmm. i hear you level let's go back a bit so we are now what we 15 years old going on 16 16 yeah we are in joburg mm. um what happened 16 to 17 because 17 that is when you contracted the yeah. hiv yeah so 16 uh i fell pregnant the first time and i hit the pregnancy from my family who um, was your baby daddy some guy from Soweto. Okay. first baby daddy some guy from Soweto. So obviously, I won't say his name. But some guy from Gokasi and... Um, Older gent as well. Not really. Um, sorry, I was in high school. He was in college, but his first year. So he was probably four years older. Okay. Four, five. Well, yeah, it's still intergenerational because it's five years. Okay. Um, Have you ever dated someone your age mate? Yeah. Okay. Well, I think now that I'm older, yeah. Yes. But yeah. my two years, three years... I don't like guys my age or guys younger. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I you I, prefer I, them older. I don't. But they're not old, old, old. Well, yeah, now, yeah, yeah. right? Well, so my partner is my age, right? At the moment. Okay. And I'm okay with him. Hopefully, okay. he'll marry me. He will. Just pray about it. I'm not told. He will. I'm not told. <laughs> he will. So Just I'm, pray about I'm joking, it. babe. Babe, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> Um, yeah, and then you were 16, you fell <coughs> pregnant with your first I pregnancy. I fell pregnant. Um, yeah. Sorry about that. And I hit the pregnancy. Okay. I hit it until seven months. Okay. And Moto Obonang is, is my eldest sister. Yeah. And I was lying on the bed and she was like, this is not fat. There's a baby in here, you know. I'm looking at this girl. I'm not. Like, the hell are you talking about? But you knew. But deep down inside, I knew because yeah. I stopped menstruation, mm. you know. And we talked about these things. Uh, and I could feel, man, something kicking at seven months. 
I, I don't know what I was delusional on a on I honestly don't know what was up with me because I literally was ignoring the whole situation. I didn't even act like someone who was carrying a baby and I was still going to school. And um, at the time I had now also gone to a private school. You know, private schools kick you out if you're pregnant. So I would hide. I would wear a blazer, body jersey, even no chase. Mm. Like I would always. And I was on holidays. and So when I'm back, coming back in the taxi, my older sister decides she's going to call my mom and tell my mom, how oh, I is coming back home, but she's pregnant. Mm -hmm. Now my mom went crazy. I found my mom waiting for me outside Kofletain. And Khona Mo, she like, you know, are you pregnant? And I was like, I get to work and went to the house. Now I've got this mom cool. You know that mom cool is. This one just looked at me in my in my stomach and said, ah, this one is pregnant. And I think after two days, I was like, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm pregnant. Oh, my mom, you are I broke my mom's heart. Oh, I broke my mom's heart. My mom cried. My mom cried. I disappointed my mom. You know, I think... Um, Did you ever disappoint yourself when? I've always disappointed myself. Even then or now at your big age? I think when I start now thinking of the past, you know, that's when I'm like, damn, you messed up. I hurt myself so much. I allowed so much happen to myself, you know. Um... I take accountability, but I've also, I've gotten into a space of forgiving myself and I've accepted the mistakes I've made because they don't make me who I am or who I want to be in the future. I understand. Hence, again, I do what I do, you know, disappointed myself a lot. Um, I had big dreams. I still have big dreams and I know I can still accomplish them. I understand. Yeah. So my family asked, um, so I told them, I want an abortion. I want to take this baby out, you know. And one thing about my mom... Did you want an abortion, or you've always wanted an abortion, but I've you didn't know how to, to go about it? It's not even about not wanting, not, not, want, not wanting to do it, but like I'm saying, I guess when I get slang and I get slang, mm. I thought maybe it will disappear. No or something. In as much as no pillar of no one. You know? Yeah. And they would tell me, no, you know, cool, cool, and don't do it. And you did that. And whatever. Yeah. And someone would say, no, throw yourself on the floor. You know? Okay, well, not someone. There were only two people who knew that I was yeah. pregnant. Go flitting. Go school They knew nothing. My classmates only found out in Jungle Bank, Kipi Pukmo 2018, that I was actually pregnant. You know, because we're friends on Facebook and whatever the case is. Nobody knew. They thought I had an ass or something. I can't remember. I made up a lie. So my mom is one person, irregardless of how much she'd be against something, if it's what you want, she'll, she'll support, she'll support you. Understand? She was very much against it, but she was like, if this is what you want, uh, let's do it. And Ratola Black, Kokai Kai, back door. Because obviously... It's past term, you know, it's past three, it's past three months. I can't get a legal abortion. Mm -hmm. So what these ladies would do is turn that surgery into an abortion clinic on Fridays when the doctor goes to pray and... It is an abortion clinic, but... No, it's not. Era. It's a surgery. Oh, okay. It's a GP. Okay. Right. So yeah. they provided that service Got you. and stuff. Got you. And... Um, they inserted something in my vagina. It was very painful. Mm. Can't remember what it is. Um, I don't know if it was a UID or something, but by inserting something, I'm thinking the goal was to open the uterus and then obviously it was sort of like um, a miscarriage. Because mm. obviously they can't take out and clean and whatever. It's like, no, go home. This and this and this will happen. And then just pull it out into an inner And then then it's going to be and this carriage that happened i was in pain for like the whole weekend because i did on a friday and now sunday my mom is scared because i'm in pain i'm pale i've been crying for three days and so we stay near two private hospitals and she was going back because the surgery was open on a sunday mm -hmm. so she wanted to go back to these women because at the time cell phones were not they were there i know my mom had one I don't know why she didn't call them. I can't remember. Mm. And um, she bumped into a nurse and told the nurse, this and this and this is happening. The nurse is like, Mama, please take your child. Don't even go back to those people because you'll lose your child. Mm. I went to the hospital and I got very nice service. You know, I, I wasn't judged. I wasn't ridiculed by the doctors. I think it's... it's, it's um, 
It's cases they've probably seen before and um, they took out whatever was inserted. Um, that termination was not successful, but now the uterus had a bit of an opening. So it was kind of like a high risk now pregnancy. But after that, I was like, Ugh, it's fine, I'll keep the baby. You okay. Know? I'll so keep it, the baby. it failed. The, no, it failed. the abortion failed. Yeah. yeah so I was like, Ugh, now I'll keep the baby. Okay. It's okay. But I'll continue going to school, but get off it. You know, because they'll kick me out. I continued going to school. And it was a Saturday. Started getting contract um started getting the contractions and um had them the whole day. Was taken to the hospital. I gave birth to a premature baby. Okay. Um baby boy. His name was Homoto. And um I'm gonna say this, it's important as we continue the story. I was tested for HIV after that. Because the doctors asked if they could do a test. And I said, yes, you can. And my results came out negative. Mm. And um, baby went to ICU because he was... Why am I getting emotional? Because he was premature. And I would come see him go ICU and so forth. And um, they discharged him because his lungs were fully developed. Okay. I went Galomolata. And mom still staying in Komsibiti, mm. but she would come after work to you check on us. You are at the us. flat. I'm at the flat. Yeah. She would come after work to come check on us. as I'm happy. And we slept. And I woke up one morning, get a feed her baby. I wasn't breastfeeding because I So she, he would stay. No, I had not started going to school, but I was not breastfeeding. I was not breastfeeding. So, um, and baby was blue and, and body cold, not moving. And I ran out. We've got an intercom. So I know this one nurse, like an emergency and she was not interested. You know, mm. she had her own reasons and we had a family friend. I called her and she came rushing. She called uh, my mom. My mom called my sister and stuff. They rushed. And unfortunately, baby was declared death from natural causes. So it seems his lungs weren't fully developed yeah. as much as they had said. You understand that? And, and to be honest, um, at 16, mm -hmm. it wasn't much of a loss. Mm. I don't know if that makes sense. I hear you. Um, for me, it was kind of like some sort of freedom. You know, and um, we did the funeral and everything. I went back to school, and you would think it's a wake up call. You know, you would think, no, girl, gather yourself. Oh, you know, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, I didn't do that. Unfortunately, I didn't do that. It got worse. Unfortunately, uh, it, it, you feels like it was the beginning of another era. Yeah. You know? And later that same year, I met the man who then would infect me with HIV. You met the musician Zombo? Yeah. Where did you meet Zombo? At a club. Some club in Hillbro. Um, one of the other artists was performing. Was it Sigala Keke? No. <laughs> Can't you remember what song... That is Sigala Keke. Is it? Yeah. This. Yeah. Did Chomi sing Sigala Keke? Yeah. Oh, yes. So I loved that song. Mm -hmm. You know, and at the time, um, I had um, an older friend. So she's the one who, who taught me life. You know, I'm not going to blame her for the choices I made. Because I found her living out of a lifestyle and I liked it from afar. And um, I what started being friends with her. Was she was getting dropped off with nice cars. Mm. She'd have nice weaves. Mm. She was, you know, your makeup on fleek. Makeup earlier on, I'm already one line, you Yeti. know. Yeti, you know, the one line. Yeah. I just admired her. So that was your role model. You know, and we ended up being friends. So I was like, and I was like, we're drinking, we're dancing, performance. So in the midst, man, I'm like, this guy looks so familiar. 
But now he, he looks familiar, but he looks different. You know, so I ask the people I'm with, guys, who's that? Mm-hmm. They're like, I am Monique. It's a lab. You know, it's a lab. And I'm like, oh, Boy, really? Like it's a lab. I'm like, oh, but he looks so different. Yeah. You know? He looked different because he had different lost weight. Different in what way? He okay. had lost weight. How cool that guy was? Nali You know, very big. Nali, but yeah. now he was, Nali is the weight. Yeah. Understand? Yeah. People lose weight. Yeah. You know? Was so, he at the height of his career there, or he no, was no, no, just, no, no. The name was there. The music. The was name there. was there, but okay. I think he had just fell off the radar. Cool. You know, I know at the time he had just released what I would believe his last single, and he shoots a music video. I can't remember the name of the song though, because it wasn't very. Okay, no, let me not say that. <laughs> I don't remember the name of the song. Although, yeah. You know, um, but I think he was trying to come back. Come back. Mm. You know. And I nigga checking me out. Now this is me. Imagine dating this guy. You know, it means get I go boma. Can I won't name these shows on TV? But my what what? You understand? Yeah. So I'll be the girl. Yeah. And then get that go show. She, baris mang mang pregnant. Like get over that girl. You know, this is my ticket to fame. This is what I've been looking for all my life. So you that know, void, the little life that I've left, that, that void I've was going to be filled by fame. Now that void's going to be filled by fame. Because look, growing up, I stayed near the Yo TV studios, so I always wanted to be a presenter, and and whatever the case is, it's always been a passion, you know. So I was like, no, this is my ticket to fame. I understand that. And he ended up approaching me. We spoke, exchanged numbers, and started communicating on the phone. I think maybe for like for a week we would call, um, no kippies, whatever. Just, just. Was he a single guy? Stage. Was he? No, he was married. He was married, and he, he, was married. he told you that he was married. Well, I knew that he was married. Okay. I think he didn't have to tell me. Yeah. You know, I, I think I knew. Yeah. Because these people, their lives are out there. Yeah. And get, yeah, I didn't care. And I'm not going to lie and try and make myself look good. You know, I, I didn't care. I've dated married guys. How before. old was he when you met him? He was 10 years older than me. Okay. You were 17 years old. He was 17. Mm-hmm. He was 10 years older. And I was after? still 16. Okay. I met him right after I talked about Yeah. I think maybe two months later, I met him at the club. Sure. This is now when I was saying Zilega. Things Lile. Supposed to be. Supposed to. And yeah. then now I'm... You're out there. I'm out there yeah. again. You know? So I met him at 16. And I was with him until 17. Okay. Because um, I met him towards the end of the year. I think Boma, September, August, somewhere around there. Mm-hmm. Um, and we communicated. And I remember in the midst of our communicating, the wife called me. I said, dude... It's almost mutung on us. I'm like, ah. We're not almost sad. You mind your I'm like, hey, dude, go you know, I want what you have. You know what I'm saying? You know, mm. we look at people's lives and we want the lives that they live, and that's not the knowing. the biggest mistake. Not knowing what they're going through. That's for the the biggest mistake. And what fire they are sitting on mm. top of. Because right now we see the finished product mm. and we want a bit of that, you know? So I was like, ah, when I put my game, you understand? And I remember one day he's like, um, let's go to the stadium. I think at the time that specific crew would um, perform during um, the soccer games. Yes. The half time. So I don't know, let, let's go to the stadium, whatever. We went with my friend and um, it was nice. Didn't meet anyone at the time. It was nice. And then he called. So I would bank school. To go be with him? No, no, I would just bounce school and not go to school. Okay. Just chill at home. So at, on that specific day, I had not gone to school. He called me. I was like, no, I'm home. He's like, no, can I drive past? I'm with my dancers. Like, it's a bit guy, guy, but I, I can't go with you and whatever. But I want to come see you, whatever. He came through. And that was the first day we had sexual intercourse. He had left his people in his car. He was driving a Golf, a Golf 1, a white he had left them in the car. My friend was sitting in the sitting room, went to the room, and the condoms were there, I remember. They were on the table, but nobody spoke about them. 
that's when we had what was the beginning of a very sexual relationship, mm. you know. Um, he had his motive, I had my motive. It was a very um, transactional relationship, even though nobody really said, Jose, this is what I want, this is what you want, to understand. And we started having a lot of sexual intercourse. And I remember at some point, I was feeding his drug habit, um, child school fees. I would steal my school fees money because mom would give me cash to go pay. And sometimes he'd be like, yo, I'm outside um, with a Mexi taxi. I can I would come down. and pay. Um, and he would be high. I remember at some point in time, I could say when he came with a bandage and it was just that, you know, and yeah. Sure. That was the relationship. And now 17, the next year, I fall pregnant. With his child. With his child. Mm-hmm. And I call him. I remember I call him on a weekend, go to dustbinning. My mom is in the house. Because now I know. I'm like, I should be. Because now menstruation happened. I never took pregnancy tests. So when Azanga was present, no, 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 no. After the first pregnancy, I went Even to the clinic. Even before, because it's all No, before, I, I, I never. You didn't. Why, you After 16? Homoto, I did. Yeah. And I don't know now. There was a lot of stigma at the clinic from the medical health professionals. Okay, and Kavana, Baba, oh, that thing. Yeah. You know? You shouldn't be doing Why are you doing what you're doing? Yeah. Yes, they would give me what they're giving me. Number one, Bamfa Depo. Depo is not good for young people. It does a lot of bodily changes, and I'd like to believe to date it's, 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 it's not good for kids that are young. They gave me that. It made me gain weight. I had pimples. A lot was happening to my body, which I didn't understand. And because there wasn't even information, I was like, I'm not going back to that place. You know, because of the treatment as well. I'm like, Ugh, I'm not going to go back there. And I think, I think when you have unprotected sex, there's always that thing, you you know, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen to me. You know? Yeah. I'm not going to get infected. Mm. Um, with the work I've done, we've done a lot of studies. Young girls never worry about HIV. They worry about pregnancy, pregnancy. more than they do worry about yeah. HIV. Yeah. You know? And um, so at 17, come a phone hey, dude, this is the situation. It's like, oh, it's not my child. Nigga, wrong. You're the only sure. person that I've been with, mm. you know? And we are having a lot mm. of unprotected sex. He's like, guys, you see? It's not mine. And at the time, apparently he was sick. And I did TB. And I like, whatever. So I'm like, oh, what do I do? I'm like, well, let's abort the baby. I'm doing this alone. No friends, nobody, nothing. Well, my friend, that elder one, she knew. I don't want to really say her name. As much as she's been wanting to come to an interview with me just to confirm my stories, but I don't want to really say her name until she, you know, does an interview with me. Um, not that I need anyone to confirm my stories, but she offered, she feels you know, she, she feels, to, let me yeah, add on to what you're telling yeah, people. Because yeah. she's also changed her life. Yeah. You know, she's doing amazing work as well on her side. And... um I found a place, Kokai Kai, downtown. I hustled money and got some eye. So now I go, I'm still over term. Okay. I think it was six months now. Mm. And I can feel like, you know, you're going to have to sleep over. Now, unfortunately, I have to call my mom mm. and tell her what's happening. She didn't know. Sure. I have to call her because she needs to bring me stuff and no one else could bring me. Unfortunately, I'm like, hey, mama. Yo. Yo, and I don't know how that hey. woman survived. I don't know how that woman didn't hey. get a heart attack. Hey. I'm like, this is what's happening. Oh, I remember my mom again crying. She, this woman. Yeah, oh. no, she's been through a lot. And she came through with what I needed. Uncle obviously, but it is what it is. Sure. I never wish any young woman to go through what I went through in my life and on that specific day, you know. So they inserted pills <laughs> under your tongue and in your vagina, and then got the pain. Okay. And it's like you're giving birth to a stillborn. 
okay. baby. You know. And and one thing about backdoor abortions, they don't care about your feelings. They want mm. their money. That's all. So I get to we say. They're not gonna counsel you. They're not gonna ask you how you're doing, how you're feeling. They don't care. And Futsu Market, they're like, oh, Futsu is a boy. They tell you. And I was like, okay. And you sleep and get discharged in the morning. And I went home. And my mom shouts and, you know, whatever. And I apologize. And for a month, I try being right. You know, I, you know. And this nigga decides he's going to call me and tell me to watch SABC One on the Friday. You know, that popular TV show, yeah, music. I'm not sure what it's called now. I haven't watched it in a while. It was live back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, hey, dude, I don't know how to tell you, but go push up the TV, girl, son. That's what he said. That's what he said. Um, and I watched TV. You know, and there he is in a wheelchair, looking very bad. He didn't even look like he looked when I met him. Yeah. He had deteriorated it was worse. badly. Yeah. And I was like, honestly speaking, Hayes, I was like, ah, it makes sense. He comes from this kind of place. I made excuses. I don't know if I was trying to make myself feel better. But I made excuses in my head. And I was like, ah, it is what it is, whatever. Mm. You know? And I think after that, on the Sunday, there was an article that came out. Mm. Now, with this guy, mom knew I was dating him. My family knew I was dating him. You, my uncles, people knew I was dating him. So people saw the article. Dude, have you have you read, you know? My mom got an get a king, what's up, get a king, hi, buona, bambi, you know? They would put... Oh, and she bought it. She's like, Wanaka, what's a hala in? Mm. You know, go pull your test. I'm like, I remember. So, go newspaping now, confirm a hurry. Yeah, I think, HIV and I think AIDS. the headline, um, I stand to be corrected, it was Zombo dying from AIDS in Atwara Machil, in the middle of the Alex streets. That was the picture. Um, and he, he was ill. On Friday, Nairang, was he performing? Or? No, 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 he was on a wheelchair. Nairang. And he was telling people he was, he was confessing or, or not, HIV. not confessing per se, he was coming out. Okay. Telling people, look, I've got this virus. I'm here to warn. I think, I can't remember the exact words. I think it was musicians that he's warning about the lifestyles that they're living, um, the girls that he had dated, and um, the fact that if you have dated him please go get tested yeah. i can't remember if he apologized because yeah. yo that interview was was horrific i really don't remember mm. it would be nice if someone could pull those archives mm. out i don't know if they're able to you know because it's not on youtube i've searched and it's not there mm. it would be nice if if that archive could be pulled out because i don't remember the exact words but i know there was a coming out and warning of artists and whatever other personal issues he had with his musical career and whatever the case is. Um, I think the interview was done by Andile. Mm. You know, and I remember Andile even retweeted my story um, when I shared my story mm. a couple of days ago. Um, obviously, he wasn't confirming anything, yeah. but he was just saying, I remember this interview. It was hectic, da 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 Because I think it's one that has stayed in people's heads because it was very graphic and here was a picture of what we think HIV is at um that even to time, date yeah. you understand and I was like I whatever mom was like get tested I'm like mama mutona get mutoso so forgetting myself forgetting that I slept with him forgetting how exposed I had been but I never got tested in denial and I was like nah Whatever. Like a sharp or oh, a half, a half and I was like, on. ah, whatever. Yeah. And unfortunately, he passed on. Right. I think now he passed on. I was 18. The next year, he passed on. And I continued my life. But at the back of my mind, I knew, Jorge, I need to get tested. But I always convinced myself I don't need to. But one thing I did, get tested 
you know, moko moko joling. So that was your first aha Wake moment, call, basically. Yeah. Um, kito sa kanya ni, kasi na niko joling na niko tapos siya. Whichever way it was. So after Anna, you met other people. You I met other people. With other people. I continued. So you infected other um, people. I had. I can't deny. No, say yes. No one has came to me mm. and said before I met you. I was negative. Now I'm positive. Mm. No one has came to me, and I've been open with my story for more than ten years or nine, ten. I've been an activist. And I'd like to believe if there was a case, I'm on Facebook, my account is open. I'm on Twitter, my accounts are open. They're not private. Someone could have inboxed me and said, "Jo, kiss mang mang, rejoice this and this." I'm yet to come across that. And if it happened, it wouldn't have been on purpose. Mm. You understand? And if there is someone, reach out. I'm sorry. You understand? I don't know between. Seventeen and twenty, right? But between those years, I had a stable boyfriend, a Jalofian, who was the only person I was sleeping with during those years, and um, he impregnated me twice. Okay. Right. But now, for me, abortion was a contraceptive, so I aborted both pregnancies. Sure. And so by 20 you were four abortions deep. So three because the one didn't succeed. The f- your first child. Yeah, and the first yes, one didn't succeed. Yes. So I was you had three abortions. Yes, I was three. Mm. So it was Zombo's child and the Jalofians. Mm. The way I'm bearing myself. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I'm not laughing. But it's okay. Um I know someone's gonna get helped by hearing my story. Hundred percent. Yeah, and so for me, abortion was like a contraceptive of some sort. You know. Did your boyfriend get tested? Did he get sick? What happened there? I've bumped into him a couple of times after we broke up in clubs, mm-hmm. and he has never come to me to say, "Ungudi seeds or Yeah. You know, and I know he's got a shop somewhere, guy guy. Yeah. In, in Joburg. Um, I haven't seen him in a very long time, but back then when I was still a club goer, um, I, I, he's never came to me to say. And like I say, I'm pretty sure he's seen my interviews. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he's seen my articles. Um, he knows people that I still talk to to date. Um, I don't know if he's. No, he does have a shop. I know he's still in SA. But he's never came out. Because I have bumped into him a couple of times after we broke up and after I had tested positive. Mm. We've bumped into each other. And he's never said anything to me. Why did you abort the babies though? So he had... Um, he was... Um, they were arranging for Motufoyena back home. Okay. And he was... A prince. Did that happen? Like did he always get princes. married to that lady? Yes, he did. He did. He did. I think um, after my last abortion, he got married so to that lady. So were you a side to him? Clearly, I was a side. Yeah. I was a main side, whatever that means, if it makes sense. <laughs> but yeah. When did you get tested? When did you find out? I got tested in 2009 on the 15th of August at 1 o'clock on a Saturday. You were how old? I was 20. Okay, what happened? Why did you decide to get tested? <coughs> so the guy I was dating, who is the father of my child, of your the one daughter, who's alive, yeah. my daughter, yeah. Um, there were rumors. Well, not rumors per se. Um, I think the rumor part of it is that I'm also positive. You know, the the, the fact that I dated him wasn't really a rumor. So, um, you know, my baby daddy was was an amazing person. And he really loved me, you know. And um, he was working at a laboratory at the time. So HIV for him wasn't a taboo. But he was like, dude, if, if this is it, go parilo test. Because now nah, I'm serious. And, and, and he didn't care about my past. Because one thing about me, I'm very open about my past. I, I think there's no one I've dated who doesn't know what I've done in the past. Because I don't want to be caught off guard. I don't want 
to be somewhere doing something and someone's like, oh, I know when it's solo, solo, so so everyone knows about my past. So your activism as in Twewi, it's like, no, as an adult. No, 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 no. I, 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 this is me. No, 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 not at that time. Yeah. At that time I was still, you know, yeah. I think after testing positive and okay. after accepting my status, okay. but in terms of him knowing, he knows that I was one of a party life. You know, I was one who dated a lot of people. He knew that. It's not like he went in thinking, or oh, uh, yes, I've broken my virginity, but I've been a good girl. You understand? And um, he's like, no, go back and test. I was like, ah, I'll do it to prove a point to you and everyone who's been bringing these things to you. The point was to say what, Lavon? I'm, well, I'm negative. I'm not positive. That's the point I, yeah. maybe to myself, yeah. I was trying to prove as well mm. and whoever was gossiping about me. But I thank them for doing that because had it not been for them, I probably would have found out about my status on my deathbed, you know. And Raza Marello test on that day as a couple and I was very confident to do it with him. And the way I was in denial, Hazel, when this woman walked in with the results saying I've got bad and good news, then we were sitting like this mm. and the counselor was here in the middle. And so already like, bad news gets a high. I was like, oh nigga, what have you been up to in your life? <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Wright to kind of like Uncle Wright. Lord, Wright's. bad music gets a high or Uncle when Wright's Wright's kind of like, like, <laughs> when. I was like, I nigga, what have you been up to the in your life? The chickens have come you know? home to roost now. Yeah, and yeah. and the lady was like, um, booty. I hate the way she. Well, as an activist now, I hate the way she delivered those news. She was like, booty when I, you are clean. Simply meaning I was dirty, but it's okay. I oh. forgive you, sis. Wherever you are, I forgive you. Um, and she was like, well, you know, this is this. And I'm like, I, it's not possible. Not me. Not me. And, um, you know, we have conversations about HIV. People say, no, a rapid test is not accurate. You know? And I was like, no, Sissy, I want my blood to be pulled. I knew nothing about having a full blood test. I didn't know what it meant scientifically. I didn't know, you know, but in my head, I'm like, no, I, I want, and you know, they would do a rapid test twice. Mm -hmm. And the second one came out positive. And she advised that I go to either the clinic or the doctor, whichever one I can, I, I can afford. For the blood test. For the blood test mm. to, to satisfy myself. But obviously I must go. I tested in August. And my partner was like, um, let's go to your house and tell your mom. You know. And he was advised, he had a medical aid, he was advised to go and get on PEP, which is post-exposure prophylaxis, which will then prevent him from getting an infection. How long should had you guys be been dating, though, by the time early got tested? I met him at the Mandela. I think so. 18 July? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. I met him at the Mandela. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys have been intimate for... But we were using condoms. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Like I said, I had changed. Yeah. You know, I was more um, cautious yeah. of what I'm doing. Yeah. And um, yeah, it was a month. And then September, I'm going to a wedding. I missed my periods in August. Wait. I'm like, ah, okay. Okay. So this time around, I buy a pregnancy test. Yeah. I take the test. I remember the next day I was going to a wedding and I did it at night. Got in my five, ten minutes, whatever. The lines were very red and very positive. And they delete two. And delete two. I was pregnant. Oh yes, the condom burst on this on the day we tested. Okay. That's why he even rushed for us to get tested. Sorry for that. Yeah. The condom burst yeah. on that morning. Yeah. And that's why he even rushed. For us, Horilo test that. Because then I guess one about two, because of all the stories he was being told, he was also scared mm. for his life. Mm. One, yeah, the condom burst. And he got on his prep. In the morning. Yeah. Yeah. And he did get on, yeah. on PP. We drove home, told my mom. Um, but yeah, mom was supportive. That part we've passed. Now I found out I'm pregnant. Double blow. Five. Mind you, I'm writing my prelims. 
I'm given the last chance to do my matric. I think my mom had had it with me. She's like, if this doesn't happen, you come in good kitchen. It's over. I'm going to get you a job as a domestic worker because I'm tired. Yeah. You know? And I understood. I was tired myself. You know, I was what? I was now 19 and still don't have a matric. My peers are in university and whatever the case is. And I know I'm a very intelligent and smart girl. It's not like Nelly Bodom, Bonkets, and Horikaska University. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Clever strat. You know? Mm. And I text them. Um, so he stayed, by the way. Okay. He, yes, for a week he went AWOL. And I'm like, ah. But I guess he was trying to adjust his emotions yeah. and he came back, he stayed and he was very supportive, you know. So you, you, you terminated that pregnancy? No, yeah. I didn't. Okay. That's my 13-year-old is... daughter. Okay. Yeah, no, I didn't. Wow. No, I didn't. First thing that came into mind was after I told him, because even after I told him about the pregnancy, he went AWOL, mm. you know, and I'm like, oh, okay, no, fine. Show to this is what I'm going to do. You and I remember those thoughts. Those you, are my thoughts. I remember like, I'm not day, raise this child alone. the day before I wanted to go. Yeah. He called me and he's like, I want that baby. You know? Um, please keep the baby. Because he's one person who knew about my terminations. I was open to him. Mm. You know, I loved the guy. You know, Nella Ratana, you um, were in a relationship yeah. for I think maybe the first time in your life. For the first time, yeah. this was genuine. Yeah, I wanted nothing from him. He wanted nothing from me. It was genuine love. You know, um, and because now I was pregnant, I was forced to go to the clinic for A and C and um, antenatal classes, and you are at the time you were not forced. Not that they forced you now, but at the time, the policy was not pregnant women need to have an HIV test, right? But they asked. And I was like, I, do what you got to do. The results came back positive, and my viral load was so high. Mm-hmm. And my CD4 count was very low. Okay. And again, um, my pregnancy was high risk. There was an opening in my uterus. From that first... You know, attempt, yeah. So they transferred me to the hospital, and immediately I was put on antiretrovirals. Okay. Now I, I I took antiretrovirals not because I understood what ARVs were, what they were doing to my body. Yes, I knew Hori, they'll help me live longer, increase my life expectancy. But I I I didn't really I didn't accept I had not accepted my status. Like if someone says don't drive fast because you'll have an accident and die and you'll be careful because I'll about to talk of fire. Yeah. You know? And I say that for a reason. Because a lot of people go through that. You know? And that's why it's easy for us to be fooled by miracle partners. I mean miracle pastors who say they heal body HIV, body what what, body what what. It's from certain things of 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 well, it's, it's solely from the fact that you have not accepted your HIV status. Yeah. And um, I took my treatment. Had you lost weight? Did you change no. physically? I was still this. I might have been a bit size or smaller because now I'm a bit bigger, but I was still fresh. So my from three years, I was a little No, I was a little No, I was a little bit. I was a little bit. I was a Nothing. Okay. There Even no when you CD4 count was low. You were never... I think it was maybe at the point where I was about to... Remember, we are different as people. Yes. Hayes. Yes. There can be someone who maybe has been exposed and is positive for 10 years and nothing bodily changes. No physical... That's why, Barry, if you are having unprotected sex, make it a point that you, you test regularly, regularly. Because we cannot... Your body can not show... We're different. Someone can get exposed in a month. Next week, I will TB. You understand? Mm-hmm. They're different as people. Mm. So now I didn't, nothing, there was no, you know? Mm. It's like a cool. I started my treatment. Um, I had a very difficult pregnancy. Because okay. during my pregnancy, I had shingles. Um, I think in, in, in African language, we call it lebanda ibandi. And um, oh, it was very sore. What are shingles? So shingles are, it's an immune kind of virus. So you will have 
either on your face more um I wanna say this Kaswana more what's this your waist? Yeah. I was about to say Mokokoko. <laughs> Wherever, somewhere in your body. Yeah. But now this thing will then be a circle, you know. Okay. I don't know the exact medical terms. I'm not a doctor, right? But it's shingles. If someone so it will do what? Shingles, Maybe neck. It will here. Wherever. Yeah. You know here. Okay. Some people have had it on the face. Okay. I just don't know on the face where it's like an Okay. it's like an I've had it here, so it will like go around. And but I never experienced that. I don't know how true that is. So yeah, how was No, as Okay. Uh, so it will be the so very painful with a pain inside. That you're getting electrocuted. Yeah. It will be very small. It'll be very red. blisters. It's a blister kind of thing. Very painful one. It'll pass. Different for everyone. Yes. Again. Mine was like that. Mm. And I went through that. As much as the pregnancy health-wise was, was difficult, my then partner was, was very supportive. Wow. He was there for me and the baby. Wow. And my, my mother was there for me. Um, I gave birth to my daughter 21st of... Um, Nana, when were you born? 21st of May, <laughs> 2010. Mm. And... Um, was a beautiful birth captured on camera. I can't wait to show my daughter that moment. Everything was captured, literally everything. Wow. Her popping up and everything, me screaming, looking as ugly as ever. <laughs> everything was there. I think it's a beautiful moment, mm. you know, and he was excited. Oh, look at the head. It's so big, whatever the case is. Um, I hope my boyfriend won't get offended by this. It was his and yours' his first child. Yes, Yenna, it was, yeah. Yenna was his first child. Yeah. Lena, I guess. Your we could say it's my child. first living yeah. child. And my first wanted experience, you know, because I embraced my pregnancy because this man wanted this child, unlike the other ones. It's not something that was planned. This was not planned, yes, but those pregnancies weren't embraced. It wasn't a joyful moment mm-hmm. in my life because pregnancy should be a joyful moment yeah. in our lives. Yeah. And unfortunately, on that day, I lost my uterus, my womb. Okay. So I gave birth to Umika. The placenta was stuck. I was um, rushed. They tried to remove it, whatever. You gave birth vaginal? Yes, natural okay. birth. And I gave birth to the placenta. Yes. I think I was like, I'm going to But it did not come out. Okay. They tried pulling and whatever, but they couldn't. I remember the doctor literally inserting his... And trying to... But he couldn't. So I was rushed to theater. Okay. So they were trying to scrape it out. It was stuck on my uterus wall. So while they were trying to scrape it out, I was bleeding. Tata. And I switched off. I don't want to say I died. You know, but... um, as much as I was unconscious, I don't know how would what the medical what the right medical term would be, but I, I'd say they lost me. Yeah, you know, and the only thing the doctors could do to save me was to cut out the uterus and sew me up and resuscitate me, so that they could save my life. And I thank them for doing that because I I could have died on that day. Wow, you know, and I lost my uterus. Wow. and I I I share these. I share these parts of my life because I'm really trying to paint a graphic picture for young people out there and young girls out there. I'm trying to be as graphic as I can because I'm really trying to say one stupid mistake could really make you lose something for the rest of your life. I can't have kids now, you know. I I obviously want to settle down one day. I have before. I've been engaged before. But it's it's one of those things. I can't date a guy who doesn't have a kid, because I don't want to rob anyone the opportunity of being a father and getting a child naturally. Yes, we can do your surrogates, we can adopt, but some men would still want to have their own kids. I also don't want to go through being ridiculed by family members and being called names. So now there's now a limit to my dating bracket. Yeah. One understand that. Um, I've met guys who I've fallen in love with who don't have kids, but I'd have to let them go even though they would say they understand, but life is life. You know, I'd had to let them go just because mm. of that stupid 
Mm. You know, mm. careless mistake. Mm. Hence, I share these graphic mm. thingies because mm. I think sometimes when we have sex, we don't think of the biological. Um, as young people, I'm not going to now talk adults. We don't think about the biological effects it could have on one, In which are future, many. Yeah. You know, which are many. Mm. There are a lot. Mm. You know, spangani, we can't. Well, I'm not mungani anymore. But back then, then. You, you you're taking your body through so much that your body has not fully developed for carrying a baby at 13, 14, 15, 16. Your body is not fully developed to be carrying a whole human being inside of you, and you could damage a lot. You Lady know what abortion, I'm saying? Lady abortion, in as much as you got rid of your babies, but they especially is the back long term harm, the back, yeah, uh, the back street yeah. ones. Because look, um, as an activist, um, it's your sexual reproductive health right to have a termination of pregnancy, yeah. but it must be one that is safe. It must be one where you are getting proper care, proper mental, um, twina, your counseling and stuff, because these will affect you years later mentally as well, because those places aren't aren't nice places, yeah. you know. So as an activist, I know that termination, but it's something now, because now I'm Christian, something I wouldn't advise, mm-hmm. not because you are killing or whatever. It's an emotional burden. It is. You know? It is. Some people don't escape from it. Some people kill themselves. Some people are on drugs. Some people survive kabujuala because they are trying mm. to fill that emptiness because it creates other voids and other emptiness, mm. you know? Mm. And, yeah. Mm. What, what happened to your boyfriend then? Baby daddy. Mm, what happened to um, him? We later broke up. Life happens, yeah. you know? Um, but he's always been there mm. for our child. But unfortunately, in 2016, um, he passed away. He was a biker. Okay. So I think Nebako Kai Kai, 40, whatever. Um, he was part of whatever team. It's a very popular team in South Africa. Mm. Or a crew, rather. They had an accident. Mm. And he passed away on scene. Sure. Yeah, 2016. Yeah. Sure. And um, your HIV, you're dating, you are dating, you are dating now. So it's like it never hindered your dating life. It never hindered my life. Yeah. I think um, it, it took me to my deathbed to accept my status. Okay. Because how, did, how did you get there? I... Went to a church. Okay. You know, and I was prayed for. Yeah. And I was told it's a demon. It's punishment for... But I don't know if I can say this word HIV. online, but it's punishment for the... I'm not going to call myself a hoe, but for the I'm not going to call You know? So I'm not going to call myself a hoe. So I'm not If I give my life to Christ, if I live right, oh. if I stop with the makeup, the lashes that I've always and been police, you know I've liked you know if I stop body police the police in the bag hey get on a daddy one time daddy no whole one side to fight right that make you sick um and I stopped Ooh. because I was in denial I had still not accepted yeah, my yeah, status yeah. at the time now I'm working at a call center I've done my matric I've passed I must say with distinctions day two yes girl yeah. <laughs> but um I'm not working. I was not able to go back to varsity. Mom did not have the money. And I think I didn't think of ways of going back to varsity at the time. Mm. You know, so I just got a job because now I've also got a child to feed. Um, and um, mom is still the only person working. Got a job at a call center. And I was still in denial, you know. Um, yes, I'm dating. Um, I'm using protection. I am on pills, but nobody knows about my status. At the time, it was just my family, obviously my ex, and one or two or three people that I had told. Yeah. It was a secret. Yeah. And Katochel, and I almost died. So Hazel. Clever. I fell sick. I was in a wheelchair. I had pneumonia. Sure. I had TB. I had everything and anything you can think about. I was, you know that picture... Yeah, Zombo. Yeah. On live. That was you. Unfortunately, we don't take pictures because we don't know what the future holds. I wish I had taken pictures during that period of my time. 
You know, I do have one picture that you can kind of tell Horonik is sharp as much as I didn't look sick, but you can tell her no if you compare oh, into off, you know yeah it's not make sure yeah. understand nikikula mompetong you would have to search for me to find me i i was in hospital for seven months mm. and that's when i looked at the mirror and i was like damn you're living with hiv and i think that's when it i started the process yeah of changing the pelobaka and making better choices for myself for my future and for my daughter and for my family. I love it for you. Where are we now? What are we doing? Sure. How's the journey? So for the past 3 years it's really been about my health, mm. you know. Um I started activism, you know. I started fighting policy, traveling, telling my story different places all the way to the United Nations headquarters you know African Union I've been awarded for African Youth Hero because of the work that I've done work solely on making sure that young people access quality health they are not ridiculed they are not judged that they have a friendly service that they go to so we advocated for things like adolescents and youth health friendly services um in some communities they are services for young people that are that are served by their peers like you'll have a nurse my age or maybe younger yeah. that's serving their peers yeah. the environment is friendly it's not adult people are able we fought for things They like that you know yeah. we fought for comprehensive sexuality education that lo becomes a subject that is taken seriously that's where we are taught about life you know lo should not just be a free period, period. that's when yeah. people need to get information about pupelo mm-hmm. and we're not limiting it to hiv we're talking drug usage we talking um depression mental health illness we talking entrepreneurship everything that could prepare one for the future mm-hmm. so we fought for that you know integrated health services in our schools where we have nurses coming khohlaba um to test to do whatever yes it's it's still difficult to integrate it because there are a lot of things that we need to do but i know there are schools that have done it there are schools who are trying to do it so in my 20s i've spent a lot of my life traveling fighting working you know in the hiv and aids um um space as a capacity building facilitator and that you have done a lot of things mm. in that space but unfortunately in 2018 i was diagnosed with a kidney disease okay. and it progressed to kidney failure mm. so right now i've got kidney failure i go on dialysis three times mm. a week i'm going tomorrow for a session for hours i'm plugged onto a machine and it's doing what my kidneys are meant to be doing so i get your kidneys need to remove fluid remove toxins so my body cannot do that that machine does that and and that's what's keeping me alive because if i miss dialysis for two days i could lose my life fluid builds up go by mess you know so for the past 3 years it's really just been about my health yeah. right but i'm also trying to rebuild my brand because 2016 17 my brand was very popular um but because of my ill health a lot in yeah. happened yeah. you know there was also the diagnosis of bipolar so i've been suffering a lot with mental illnesses and it's it's a journey you know in and out of hospital for that 21 days program even got january i want to admit myself you know because i just want to just go and fill my cup because mm. it's, it's been a hectic year mm. it's been very hectic but i've made it i thank god that i'm here we thank you know? god that you're here When i made it and i wrote book? the book you know the book is i'm still here from my deathbed to the world um it talks about exactly what we're talking about now mm. and it's really to give hope education and inspire i i don't want i give a claim not remorse there's a word that i'm looking for i'm not trying for people to feel sorry for me i'm not a victim of my circumstances you know i'm not what people would want to call me you know i changed my life i changed my story i made the mistakes that i mistake that i made i forgave myself 
um, mine is of self-inflicted pain and pain inf um, inflicted by others, you know. I've, I've, uh, and healing is a journey we go through every day. I'm not going to say I'm perfectly fine, but I am not what I was yesterday, I love you know, because I work on me every day. Mm. Because remember, there'll be triggers. We go through things in life, you know. Um, when I was working in my early 20s, I had a good life. I was flying first class to the mm -hmm. States, to Washington, to wherever, you know. I was staying in Midrand in a beautiful apartment. I was very independent. And my diagnosis came with me losing everything, going back home, um, losing my career, losing a lot of things that I had to step down of a lot of roles because I can't travel. I was a board member at the age of 26 for an international organization, you know. Mm. And I'm proud of myself because as much as I messed up in life, I rebuilt my life and I live every day, you know, making right the wrongs that I did in the past mm -hmm. for myself and for the young people of Africa. Because I want an African young girl to tell a different story. Because the problems we go through in South Africa are continental, they're worldwide. But because I'm an African, I'll say Africa. Can, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I don't want African young girls to tell the story that I'm telling. I want them to tell a story that of an empowered, educated, and successful young girl in every way. Mm -hmm. Successful mentally, financially, health-wise. Young people who made correct choices, who stayed in school, finished their studies. Yes, they can date, right? Mm -hmm. But they made the correct choices. They protected them themselves. They got on contraceptives. They bagged condoms and used them. And they stood... If a man is going to say, hey, minya, young limaza, young whatever, you can stand and say, if we're not doing it, I'm fooling, yeah. irregardless of the 10K you're going to get tomorrow, of the weave, the trip, whatever, it's not worth mm -hmm. I'm not saying change your lifestyle, but I'm saying make more informed choices, you know, go to school. That's the only thing you can do for yourself. Invest in your future. 100%. Because opportunities, that's a Maya. I'm turning 35 next year. I can't just apply for a scholarship. It will be by God's grace. Because now I want to go back to school and do my degree. And that's one thing that I will do. It might take years. I might get it at 40, but I know that I'm going to do it. And I've already started. You know, I'm doing a higher certification and I'll graduate next year, by July. But young people need to make different and more informed choices. It's not about what people post on social media. We live lies. Mm. You know? We live lies. Mm. We post the finished the product. Things, the edited but Sonke clearly pays And 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 unfortunately people make choices based on what they see on social media and, and that is not what it is. 100%. And no one is immune to an HIV infection. Yeah. No matter how beautiful, successful, how rich, how popular you are, you are not immune to uh, infection. And the reason I always say that I was infected by someone popular, because when someone has money or is popular, we believe they're immune to certain things. We believe they're immune to pain. We believe they're immune to depression. We believe they're immune to body HIV because they are on a high pedestal. Rightfully so. They've earned to be there. They've worked hard hard for that status that they have built for themselves, but they are human at the end of the day. 100%. Lebohang Brenda Mutsumi, you have said it all. Thank you. Thank you me. so much, Mami, for coming to FM. Thanks for having me, Mama. I and enjoyed you gorgeous, having you as a guest. Thank you so much. Very chibi, get chibi, get chibi, get chibi, <laughs> get chibi, and Ogasi Chipuli. Ogasi Chipuli. Thank you so much. Thanks, babe. Danko.